Hello everyone and welcome to the Honey Bee Stamps YouTube channel. This is Kelly and I'm excited to introduce you to the products in our Perfect Day release. This release has a little bit of everything, but today we're celebrating weddings and our love for florals. So let's get started. First up, we have the Perfect Day Stamp, Die, and Stencil Collection. I'm going to start out with the stamp set, and I'm sorry it's a little hard to see with the glare there, but it has a beautiful floral arch, a banner, and lots of sentiments. Now, many of those sentiments are going to fit into that banner below, and here is a little diagram for you. You can see that beautiful arch. Lots of great wedding sentiments, congratulations, the perfect day, the happy couple, just married, and so on. Here is the coordinating die set that goes along with that stamp set. As you can see, it's going to cut out that beautiful floral arch, layering banner, and then all of those great sentiments. Now here is a look at the stencil collection. This is going to make it easy for you to color in that beautiful floral arch. Now there's even a mask, so you can mask off your hard work that you did on your stencil and then add some color around the edges, whether you want to brush on blues or yellows or whatever you're going for for your wedding card. And then the rest of the stencils in this set are going to make it easy to color in the images. So as I pause here, you can see that that is etched all the way around, so it's so easy to line that up with your stamped or heat embossed image. And then you just add shading in to the open areas in that stencil. I'm going to walk through these really fast. You can see the banner there, the ribbon banner is there on the side, so you can stencil that as well. So you can change up your brushes and your inks and add cl colors to the flowers and to the centers of the flowers and then all of the leaves around the sides. And again, every stencil has that etched design all the way around. So it makes it super easy to line these up and then add color into your images. Next is a fun standalone die set that coordinates with the Perfect Day stamp, dies, and stencils, and this is called Tie the Knot. As you can see, it is a layering wedding dress, a layering suit or tuxedo, and then little accessories to go with both. There's a hanger, there's a belt, there's a bow, and those fit down there on that beautiful wedding dress. There are the lapels and the collar to the jacket. There is a little pocket and a pocket square. There's also a bow tie. Now here's a look at the layering guide for tie the knot. As you can see, it shows you step by step how to layer your die cuts to get the perfect wedding dress and the perfect tuxedo. It's so easy. And then here is another layering guide that shows you what the wedding dress and that tuxedo look like tucked into that beautiful floral arch. So these layering guides make it super easy for you to create a beautiful card. Now here's a look at a card I made using all of those products. You can see the perfect day arch, the sentiment banner there, and then the tie the knot wedding dress and tuxedo in the center. The inside wedding sentiment stamps and dies are the perfect coordinating products for all of your wedding cards. Whether you want to stamp congratulations on the front of your card and then add a different sentiment on the inside, this set has you covered. Everything from our warmest thoughts and wishes are with you as you celebrate your marriage. Your marriage honors God and brings so much joy to the friends and family celebrating with you. Congratulations to the happy new couple. Cheers to a life and love and happiness. Now here's a close-up view of all those sentiments and the beautiful and simple fonts used here. Now the coordinating die set is going to cut out every one of those sentiments. So whether you want to stamp directly onto your card or die cut your greetings and pop them up, this stamp and die combo is the perfect finishing touch to your wedding projects. The next standalone die set is our Succulent Garden Builder. 
So you can see here, there's different vessels to put your succulents into. There's a hanging basket and a stand that the pots can go into. And then there's lots of different little dies that are going to cut out your succulents. So whether you're watercoloring paper or ink smushing paper or just using easy pattern paper, these dies are gonna cut beautifully. Now here is the Succulent Garden Builder Layering Guide, and you can see different options on how to build your succulent garden, different color combinations, and even some options on how to arrange all those little succulents inside their containers. Here Lisa has created three different cards using some of our Honeybee Stamps pattern paper. You can see that she's done three different succulent arrangements and she's paired those with different sentiments. It was so easy just to cut these out of pattern paper and then arrange those in their containers. Here, Melissa has created a beautiful little succulent garden out of watercolor paper. You can see that she's paired two of those containers together and filled them full of succulents. Now, this stamp and coordinating die set is called Painted Blooms. And as you can see, they are solid floral stamps, the vines and the leaves. There's also the little centers to the flowers and little stems and buds. There's also the coordinating die set that's going to cut out every one of the images in that Painted Blooms stamp set. I'm going to create a card with this set at the end of the video, so I hope you'll stick around for a closer look. Now, this is the Painted Blooms layering guide. As you can see, there's some color combinations here, different greens and pinks. There's a way up there in the top left that you can arrange those on your card, but these are made to mix and match for your own floral creation. Here Brenda has created a beautiful card with the Painted Blooms stamps and coordinating dies, and she has combined that with the Tie the Knot tux and wedding dress. It's such a gorgeous card. Now the fun new stamp and die set I have next is called On the Line Succulents. There are two lines or borders, if you will, of succulents. You can see the line there. So fun for the edges of your card or the center and then put a sentiment in the middle. The sentiments, we have everything from with sympathy, thinking of you, love you, big hugs, sending my love, and more. There's the die set that's going to cut the top and the bottom of each little on the line succulent cluster. And there are dies for all of the sentiments in that set. Now here's a card that I created. I did some Copic coloring and then paired that with the love you sentiment in the center. Next is our lovely layers magnolia and I'm so excited about this lovely layers set. You can see we have a large magnolia bloom along with the little centers. There's also two leaves in this set. Now I have die cut these and put these together in a live stream. Let me show you the card that I created. I did a little bit of ink blending on the leaves and the center of that magnolia and paired that with a sentiment from the foil script wishes, foil plates, and the coordinating dies. Okay, so it's time to create a card with that Painted Bloom stamp and coordinating die set. Now I have printed out that layering guide you can see up there on my desk and that's just so it makes it easy for me to arrange every one of those vines and leaves and stems and little blossoms onto the front of my card. Now the color combinations I'm going with, I'm showing all the inks that I've used there, but I am doing greens and then pinks and then yellows and oranges. And I'm going to start out by stamping on all of the vines and leaves. And I love to use solid stamps because I can arrange those in my Misty. I can give them an all over coat with whatever color that I want to use. And I can do the ink blending for different uh, variations of greens right there on my stamp. And so I'm just getting all of those little stems and everything arranged. I close the misty door to pick up all those stamps and I am starting out with bundled sage. So this is the lightest green and I am making those stamps really good and juicy with the bundled sage ink. And then I'm going to take a little sponge dauber. And this is because sometimes oxide ink 
tends to puddle on top of your stamps. So going over it and just kind of smoothing everything out right there on top of your stamp is going to make it to where you don't have to stamp as many times and it's going to give you a better impression, a more solid impression. And so I'm just very lightly tapping over the top of those stamps and then I can close the door on my Misty and use my little Honeybee Stamps Be Creative pressure tool to glide over the door of my Misty. You can see how beautifully those stamped. Now I'm not cleaning my stamps off or anything, but I'm going to take a sponge dauber and this time Rustic Wilderness is the darker uh, color that I'm going to use. And I'm adding some shading into the stems and the bottom parts of the leaves. So I'm just dipping that little sponge dauber right into that ink and then tapping it on. And then once I get all of these little stems and little buds and things covered, I can shut the misty door again. And then again, just to make sure that I get even coverage all over those stamps, I'm gonna use that pressure tool again. Now you're going to start to see that ink variation in some of those areas darkening up. Now it's really easy to add more ink if you wanted a little darker or you wanted a smoother transition. All you have to do is take that little sponge dauber and then dab, dab, dab over the top. And I kind of wiggle that back and forth and move it up and down the stamp to kind of get a variation of those greens. And I'm liking that, so I'm ready to move on. Next, I'm going to stamp all of the little blossoms. So I have a new sheet of paper. Now I have the big blossoms or the big full open blossoms there to the top. And then I have the little buds to the bottom. Now I'm gonna stamp these in different colors. So that's why I have them so separated. So the all over, all over color of my big blossoms is gonna be saltwater taffy. And again, you can see I'm taking that little sponge dauber and just smoothing out that ink to make sure I get better coverage on each one of those stamps. And it makes sure that it doesn't kind of puddle up on top of there. Use my pressure tool to make sure I get all that ink down. And you can see how beautifully those stamp. Now for the centers of the flowers, I'm going to darken it up with worn lipstick. And so this isn't going to be a huge... Uh, color variation, but it's beautiful just to see that darker color right towards the center. So again, I'm taking that worn lipstick on a sponge dauber, dabbing it on into the center, and then using my pressure tool to really press down the lid. Now again, it's so easy if you want to add darker color, just add a little more ink, shut your misty door, and then you can add and build up that color um, and the pigment onto your paper. So next, I am taking mustard seed on all of the blossoms. And again, I'm going to smooth out that ink with a little sponge dauber so I get a really good impression and make sure I don't have any little puddles on top of my stamps. And then I can close the misty door and stamp those down. Now, I'm going to show you a different way to do this. So you could stamp it and do your yellow and then go back to your stamp with the orange. This time, I'm going to mix it all together. So I have added the orange or spice marmalade onto the stamp, and you can see that works just as beautifully as well. And so you can do it either way. You can add one color at a time, or you can kind of mix them together right there on top of the stamp. Again, I'm going to deepen those up and kind of spread out that color just to make sure I don't have any harsh blending lines. And then my little yellow and orange blossoms are all ready to go. I take the coordinating die set and I'm going to match those up with each of the flowers, leaves, stems. And how I like to do this is I like to pick out a, a part of the flower that stands out. So maybe it's a longer petal or a leaf that's on one side. And then I just kind of spin it around and look for whichever image is going to match up with that die like a puzzle piece. And then I tape it down with some highlighter or easy C tape. Now I decided that I want these beautiful vines and florals on an all white card. But to give this card a little bit of texture, I'm going to use our layering lattice cover plate dies. And so these I have two dies. I have the background or the bottom there to the far right, and then I have the top piece. 
Now I'm adding just a little bit of our Be Creative liquid adhesive to some of those little in-between areas and around the edges. And then I can kind of hold this up and wiggle it into place. And I'm gonna put that under an acrylic block to make sure that those dry nice and flat. Once my liquid adhesive has had time to do its job under that acrylic block, I'm ready to adhere those lattice cover plate die cuts onto the front of a five by seven card. Now I'm gonna kind of make a lattice where it looks like those vines and florals are kind of crawling up my card and I'm gonna add that right into the center. So that's just going to be some texture and a landing place for all of those leaves and little blossoms. Next I'm going to start adding the leaves first and I'm adding all the leaves and vines with some liquid adhesive and those are going flat onto my card. So again, I'm using that layering guide because it kind of shows you how you can arrange every one of those vines and those little florals onto the front of your card. Again, that's just an option. You could totally mix and match these and make a beautiful creation as well. Now once I have all of the greenery arranged, next I can pop up all of the blossoms. And I'm gonna use some of our tabbed foam dots for that. Now some of these are gonna go right onto that lattice work and then some of them are gonna be hanging off the edge as that pink one up there at the top. And I'm trying to spread out the different colors. So I'm adding my pink flowers in different places and then I'll go in with the smaller ones and add those to some of the little stems. And I'm just trying to figure out how I'm gonna nestle that one in there. I cut in half one of my little tabbed foam dots I'm just going to slip it right down underneath there and it looks like it's connected right there onto that little stem. Now I just need to add the last couple of little blooms onto the stems and again I'm popping up all of the blossoms and leaving the stems and greenery all flat and this is my starting out arrangement. Now once I got my sentiment that I wanted to use, happy birthday, now I did peel off a couple of those florals because they were going to be underneath that sentiment. And so I just gently peeled those back and removed them. And now I'm just going to tuck those in right around that sentiment. And then this Painted Blooms floral card will be all finished. Now before I was completely done, I decided that this card wouldn't be finished without some of our warm pearls. Now the pearls that I'm adding to the background of this card are kind of a champagne color. I love to add those with my pen blade. Now here's a look at the finished card with the painted blooms, stamps, and coordinating dies. I hope you've enjoyed all of the products from the Perfect Day release. Make sure you check out all the information in the description box below, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.